So I'm probably just going to roll a small one for this episode. I actually have a good amount of stuff I need to get done. So I only want to get a certain amount of lifted right now. Do I have anything I need? So you know I'm a sincere YouTuber. Like I actually sat down. No papers, no flour, no grinder. Literally nothing I need. So, um, I actually did want to let you guys know, though, that... Because I know some people don't know. Like, our original channel is CBD Hemp Library. And we have a Delta 8 company, actually. With just a few products that we really like. Um, we worked closely with people to get them. They had the highest quality. So, we have 50 milligram gummies. You can see they're Houston-themed with the grill. And so, we got a couple different types of 50 milligram gummies. And then we have a couple different types of Delta 8 flour. So you got the pecan pie and the rocket fuel. If you're actually interested in products, um, DM us at Legally Lifted HTX. Um, we'll get you guys a pretty good discount for $420. Um, so just let me know. But I'm going to go grab stuff for this episode. I'll be right back. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. So for people that are like celebrities and people that I look up to and role models of mine, not really personal role models, but somebody like that's famous that you kind of look up to. Um, I kind of like to learn more about them, learn the best I can about them, like what they do, what makes them different from other people, um, how they got the success that they got and really whether they're a good role model at all in general. Whether what they did as a person should be modeled or were they just sociopathic enough to be successful, but there really is no replication of what they did um, because of how insane they are, essentially. Because there's a difference, in my opinion, a, a really big difference. And I think some people would be like, maybe that insanity is that genius. But no, I, I think there are certain levels of um, sociopath that people have even the ability to get to, you know? Like, in terms of some very, very famous people in history, um, to name a few, like the Steve Jobs, I recently watched Get On Up with Chadwick Boseman and saw her name James Brown and a few other people in history won't own their kids, for example. Like, would disown their kids with, for Steve Jobs, it was like mathematical proportions as to why he like it could or couldn't be his kids and with James Brown he's just sociopathic and uh selfish enough to just deny them and probably had so many women that he couldn't even keep up with who he was pulling out of or not so in though in that sense um I've, I've just watched it and to bring this back, I'm sorry, I smoke a lot, so sometimes random thoughts come up. Or not random thoughts, but I start talking mid-thought. I watched, like I said, that movie Get On Up with Chadwick Boseman, and then I just really started doing research on James Brown, who the person James Brown was. And I, um, in short, was appalled. As I am, though, with all famous people I looked up. I've done the research on Muhammad Ali. After I've seen it before, but I watched the Muhammad Ali movie. Um, I did the research on... Um, Steve Jobs, after I read his, not autobiography, but his biography, and which was also like closely um, edited, by, not edited by him, but for sure he was a part of the making of. I have looked closely at um, Gandhi with some of the work that he did. And when you just look at MLK, when you look at the background of these men, it is always so interesting um, how they're remembered, in my opinion. Um, so, like, as it pertains to, to James Brown, as I was just talking about, like, he did some of the most heinous things I have ever heard of in a celebrity. Like, in today's world, could not exist as a celebrity, no matter how talented he was. Uh, there's the stories of him kicking his pregnant girlfriend downstairs. Um, there were stories, uh, a lot of rape allegations, a lot, a lot of stuff that just wouldn't stand today. A lot of extortion allegations like too many for it to have not been true almost so with that being said um it's just so interesting how history remembers some of these people we were supposed to look up to 
and I hate to even bring this episode up because I feel like I, I hate tearing down people of old, especially black men. I, I really I don't like doing that, you know. But when you read these stories, it becomes about more. It becomes about more than race to me personally. Whether I can look at that person and be like, I'd like to emulate what that person did in their lifetime, or they should be even put on a pedestal. And that transcends race, in my opinion. The unfortunate thing is, it may not always transcend time period. Because if you look at some of the greatest the greatest men in history or whatever, and you're looking back far and far in history, they're all doing heinous shit that today would just be unallowed, you know? Because I'd be thinking about, like, before America existed, <laughs> really, and before the UK became as diverse in London as it is and stuff like that and diversity, like, everybody had to be racist. You hadn't seen the other races, so you were literally just terrified like you saw another animal when you saw another race of people. So, like, racism had to be, like, ingrained in people simply because psychologically, like, you have to be scared of something that you've never fathomed before. And they started saying people that they had never fathomed exist. But, um, it's just interesting how history remembers certain men and women, I'm sure, but men because our history was written by men primarily, and so it's very men centric, if you will. Tends to be one race, but regardless, um, when you look at how our society defines greatness. I wouldn't say our society is looking for the best fathers. I wouldn't say our society is looking for the best family, man. I wouldn't say our society is looking for the things that I personally think makes men great, you know, or people great in general, which is being important in their personal society, not necessarily important to the whole world, but being an integral part of their personal society and taking care of their families, men or women, is who I consider really, like, great people because that's all... Humans are really put here to do at the end of the day. Care about the people around us. Help build our society up. And in my opinion, be kind. And a lot of the greats were not kind. Were not taking care of their families. Almost none of them. And I thought about it, I'm like, maybe, maybe these great men, like, that's just like what their sacrifice was. Maybe you can't completely change the world and raise your kids. Like, Malcolm X, never at home. Martin Luther King, never at home. Gandhi, abandoned his family. Um, Bob Marley, hardly raised most of his kids. I mean, and he died at 36, so that doesn't help. Um, James Brown, nine kids. No, 13 total kids. Claim nine. He traveled literally till he died and was a PCP and crack addict. So doubt he raised his kids very well. Like As I do more and more research... Into these men, it's like, I got to stop doing research. I got to like just listen to the stories and be inspired by the stories that we're supposed to be told, you know? It's like these people are just as illegitimate as YouTube gurus of the day and of today's world and stuff. You know, they're literally just as illegitimate because they're clout and foundations are built up on artificial lies, you know? And here, now they do it with income, but back then they used to do it with, like, morality or religion or whatever they needed to do to persuade the people um, that what their skill set was, which in most times was really just talking. Sorry, hitting the mic. Really, most of the time was just talking. Um, convincing people that they were great. 
But what makes you great? What makes somebody great in our society? I, I understand. It's a very facetious question. Like, I understand the, the clout, money can, um, genius can. But I, I guess when I personally think about it, it's kind of like, is that what makes somebody great to me? And the answer would have to be no, because that's just not how I live. Or that's just not my moral standpoint. And this isn't to talk bad about some of these men of the past. You know, like everybody has their flaws, of course. <laughs> but some of their flaws were pedophilia. Some of their f- flaws were physical abusing, physically abusing double-digit women. Some of their flaws were abandoning their children as babies and never seeing them again. Some of their flaws were, I, I mean, I guess at least of what I just said was cheating on their wife multiple times or just divorcing them at will. Some of their flaws is potentially murder. And so where do you go through and you, and you look at what is... And we're seeing them, and we're seeing them, it happen. Like, we're like, what happened? What makes these men great, you know? Because Dave Chappelle has talked about this. We could say with all of the cases in there, um, Bill Cosby still probably did more good for the race than bad. As crazy as that sounds. With 52 rape cases. With 52 rape cases, he still had 50 years of mostly positive things for black people. If he had died 10 years earlier He would have gone in history as a great man Which is in my opinion Which is crazy too you know I think James Brown died just fast enough James Brown makes it to like 2015 He doesn't make it He goes to prison just like Bill bro Because he's doing worse shit than Bill Imagine that Worse shit than Bill Go on Wikipedia and type it in. Then read articles. See what happens. See what happens. What $100 million can get you out of, bro. It's crazy. And then, of course, when you're looking in history, like, how much of this is fabricated? How much of this is to muddy somebody's reputation? With Bill, I'm not... I, I don't... I, I have some opinions about Bill. I do think he did probably most of what they said he did. Primarily because he never came out and said he didn't. How can you believe somebody that never even said they didn't do it? Like, Bill Cosby has never come out and said, I did not do this. So, if that, like, that, that's like a telltale. Like, right? <laughs> like, every innocent man I've ever seen in history comes out after they get accused and be like, I didn't do that shit. You know? I didn't get that from Bill Cosby. <laughs> If he's not defending himself, how am I supposed to? But I do understand also that history is going to work to muddy the reputation of successful black men as well. So you're at an impasse, you know? Who do you believe? Does it matter? Is it more important what they did to progress the race than what they did in their personal? Is James Brown letting black people take control of their own music? He took control of his own music. He paid for his own venues. He kept his sponsorship in-house. He kept his promotion in-house. A lot of it. He outsourced his management, but like a lot of his money stayed in-house to where he really revolutionized black music business to where it, he was one of the first people that was actually be able to like break those hundreds of millions of dollars because he was keep like that is huge. That helped people like Jay Z have what they have today, who can now help rappers beat um co- uh, sorry court cases, who can um help who uh buy art and then resell it in the black community. You know, put other black artists on. Put black people and cannabis on. James Brown started that foundation. Is that a bigger deal than him beating 10 plus women? 
That's for us to decide, I guess. That's for history to decide. I don't know. People that don't say that first hit don't taste different after smoking it with butane. Cat. Or they've never tried hemp wick because that was nasty. Then after that, it's pretty normal. But it's crazy. And, it, and it's especially crazy for people who don't have mentors personally in their life that they actually know. And when you see people at, on these pedestals and those are your mentors because you don't have mentors at home and now they aren't who they seem to be, I, I can imagine. I'm not in that position personally, so I can't speak for those people, but I can imagine that can be extremely heartbreaking. Um, what did Dave Chappelle say also? He said all of his um, heroes are either drug addicts, former like drug addicts or registered sex offenders, I think he said, or felons or registered sex offenders. Like That's just how it is. When you look up at these celebrities... So many of them are so sociopathic, and that's how they got so big that, like, their foundation's fucked. Because a lot of work ethic comes in, like, drowning out bad things and drowning out bad past. It's not, it's not a coincidence that so many artists come from such poor backgrounds, or such not poor backgrounds in terms of monetary, but such poor backgrounds in terms of abuse and things like that. And that's what birthed their music. That's what birthed their pains and stuff like that to make the music. With those pains, not just music comes out. Abusing the people around you comes out. Drug addiction comes out. Alcohol addiction, which is a drug, comes out. And all that stuff cycles. And then it just gets passed up with money and money and money and money and money. But money can only patch shit for like as long. And this is stuff I haven't lived, but this is stuff that after seeing all those people I named, most of them... Die if they died rich, they died very unhappy. They were assassinated, or of all the people I named, or they died very broke, leaving their family with nothing, or a combination of two out of three of those. Who do we look up to, you know? How do we find mentors? Do we look past the bad and just focus on the good? Everybody's got a dark side. How dark can their dark side be for them to be acceptable in our eyes? I have my limits. I've already lost respect for too many of these older generation, like, heroes, to be honest. They've already lost my respect. To be honest, when you don't take care of your church and you lose my respect. And I still study your work. Like, I still study Steve Jobs. I, I still look at James Brown's, like, business aspect and stuff like that. But, yeah, when you don't raise your kids, it's tough for me to respect you, for real. As a human being. And that's just me personally. But some people. And, and I can understand this view. Because these people are still necessary. You know. And these people came from a lot of times. Abuse and pain from their childhood. So is it their fault? Um, yes. I mean it's everybody's fault. They can't raise their kids in my opinion. To be honest. Other than victims for real. Like rape victims and stuff like that. But like adults who, especially celebrities who have the means to do it but choose not to do it, lose my respect. Of course, there's extenuating circumstances where people just cannot do it. But these multimillionaires can, <laughs> you know? And so people in the past, there's not too many 
green ones left, I, I I would say I have like a solid like two three people I still look up to from the past, and they still have their issues. I still would say I still like Nelson Mandela overall. I think I still like. I think I still like Bob Marley still overall. Obviously, or for sure, still like his music, but um, as a man, you have to understand the context of it as well. Because a lot of people look at him as like a cheater and leaving his wife and stuff like that. But the way that their culture is was in a real monogamous relationship. Like his wife was out there too, you know. So um, you have to take the context of the place too and the time in which they died into all into context, you know. And I still like MLK. I still like uh I still like Malcolm too. MLK got some sketchy shit, but he's one of those people that benefits still far outweighs his negative and there just hasn't been enough anything and and, and you never know like those People, a lot of times, die early enough. And that's, like, what I talked about with Bill Cosby. Like, Bill Cosby died. He outlived how long he should have. You know, if he had died earlier, his legacy would be different. Hope I didn't ruffle too many feathers. Hope I didn't talk too bad on your heroes. I respect everybody that I named for what they did and what they're great at. But this episode is really talking about who I would want to look at and emulate. And it's tough. And it's almost it almost makes it tough to look up to anybody in modern day until they die. And then even after that, you never know what comes up later, you know? And back then it was just different. Back then in terms of earlier than just camera phones. Camera phones changed everything. Especially in regards to like the family unit and men, women, interactions and stuff like that. And um, it really like a lot of the internet and spurred a lot of these like women rights groups and stuff like that. Which is great to spur a lot of women's rights to be able to work and things like that to where they can escape a lot of this abuse and stuff that we're talking about or that I'm talking about with a, with a lot of these men and with in regards to a lot of these men. Um, not to say that abuse doesn't still happen, but times are a little bit different now. Like somebody like James Brown could not be doing that. The stories you read about him, the court cases, all that stuff that's been gone against him, he could not be free today doing that stuff because somebody would get it on video and it would be over. Back then, there's no video. And from the people before you, you're going to repeat what they do. 100%. I really think that's the real answer now that I'm got thinking about it. It's really just to... All right, he was great at business there. He was a great family man. He was a great... Uh, um, he had great fitness. Like, he kept up with his fitness. He ate well. And, like, really picking this from all these different, like, positive sources. But kind of separating the meat from the bones, if you will. The person from the message. Or the person from the lesson. Because everybody has some type of lesson. But that doesn't mean you should look up to them wholly as a person. Almost no one should be looked up to wholly as a person. For real. Just, like, one or two aspects of them. Appreciate you guys tuning in with me for another episode. I really, I hadn't made an episode in a few days because I'm like, just trying to get ready for this new show. I'm going to Oklahoma City this weekend. Um, we got this new show called the Cannabis Road Show. We are going on traveling road show, a traveling cannabis show type shit. We can go be going to different states, different countries when the world opens back up. So y'all stay tuned for that. I'll definitely be updating y'all on that. Um, we have the discount code. 
for the discounts available for the products. Please DM Legally Lifted if you're interested in that. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in for another episode once again.